Hey guys, and welcome back to a new episode of Philips Android News in which I will summarize the hottest new shit for us Android developers from the past month, this time for yeah, July's episode. So I will summarize what happened in June that is relevant for us Android developers in our everyday work life. This month we have some Compose changes, we have some Android 13 changes, and we also have some amazing Kotlin changes that I will talk about here. And starting with Jetpack Compose, we finally have independent Compose versioning. What does that mean? Well, till now we had one single Compose version that we have in our project, and that Compose version applies to all official Compose libraries. And that led to the issue, for example, that we often couldn't really update our Kotlin version to the latest Kotlin version because the Compose compiler did not support this. Since the Compose compiler actually used the Compose version and updating the Compose compiler itself would have then required, yeah, basically an update of all Compose versions because there was one Compose version for all Compose libraries. And those versions are now independent of each other. So for example, there can be a later Compose compiler version than there is for the Compose view model dependency, for example. So all these libraries can now be developed in their own speed, while we can be sure that we can get the latest Compose compiler version to actually support the latest stable Kotlin version. So that's pretty cool. And the next one is that the beta of Android 13 now reached platform stability. What does that mean? Well it really means that you are now ready to use this uh, new Android 13 beta, um, that it's safe to be used and that this is basically the final stage of it. So you can expect that there are no more changes to it. If you wanna know what Android 13 actually brings for us developers, then I really recommend to watch the previous Android news episodes where I really dived it deep into this. So we now have things like themed icons, we have a new photo picker, we have uh, some privacy changes, which is actually rather painful for us developers. And we have lots of improvements for large screens like tablets and stuff like that. Um, so a lot of cool stuff happening there. Definitely check out the previous episodes if you haven't already. And then the next change is that we now have Kotlin 1.7.0. So a new Kotlin version is out that you can now use in your Android projects. And this new Kotlin version brings a lot of new cool features. Starting with the new Kotlin K2 compiler. Yes, there is a new version of the Kotlin compiler, which they call K2. And that compiler promises some serious performance improvements. Sadly, not for us Android developers, because it's only for JVM projects, so not for Android apps. So we probably still need to wait some hours for our Gradle builds to finish. Or maybe not, because there is still something new in regards to the compiler or to how projects are built. And that is that the Kotlin 1.7.0 version actually has a new approach to incremental builds. What is an incremental build? An incremental build is basically um, that only parts or portions of your project are rebuilt or are compiled that actually changed. So I'm sure you've already noticed this. If you just add a print line statement, for example, to your code and then click rebuild, then this is usually pretty quick. But if you implement like three new features and then click build and all these features need to get compiled, then this takes a lot longer. And that is not the case for all compilers out there, but for the uh, Cotton one, it is the case. So it supports that. And luckily that gives us some quicker builds. And with this new approach, the uh, JetBrains team actually promises that there are some quicker builds. They actually speak of a performance improvement of up to 80%, which I don't believe right now, <laughs> but even if it's just 15 or 20%, that would be pretty solid. This new approach to incremental compilation is actually not enabled by default. If you use Kotlin 1.7.0, you actually need to opt into that kind of with a Gradle property, which you can simply see here. So simply add that to your Gradle properties file in combination with using Kotlin 1.7.0, and then you can hopefully see some benefits of that new approach. Then the next feature that we now get with Kotlin 1.7.0 are definitely non-nullable types. So you will probably know that in Kotlin we have nullable and non-nullable types. However, since Kotlin is interoperable with Java projects in which we don't have this clear distinction between nullable and non-nullable types, this could sometimes lead to some issues that a property in Kotlin was basically marked as nullable, even though in Java it could never be null. And that specifically applied for actually generic type parameters here. Now with the latest Kotlin version, we actually have a new AND operator that we can apply to generics to actually mark a generic parameter as definitely non-null. I don't want to go too deep into this here, but I will link a great article down below, which kind of dives into this, but it's really not a thing that you will need on your everyday life. 
Next up, what's new in Kotlin 1.7.0 is builder inference. So there are some builder functions in the Kotlin standard library just to create some common data structures like a map, for example. Um, so there's a build map function where you can simply yeah, just put some values into a map and then that function kind of creates it for you. Um, and for this, for these types of functions, you now have supported uh, type inference. If you don't know what type inference is, that is basically what um, kind of resolves the type of an object so you don't need to specify that. So if you just um, specify a variable, a val x is equal to five, then the compiler is smart enough to actually see that you set the value of x to five and five is an integer, so the type of x must be an integer. So you don't need to specify that x is actually an, inter uh, an integer. Until now, with these builder functions, we actually had the issue that we always needed to specify the type, but now since we have this new builder inference, that is not needed anymore. So overall, not a really big thing. I actually never really use these functions, but it's still pretty cool. And last but not least, at least for the important changes here, we have a new operator for Kotlin, which is the underscore operator, which you can use for generic type parameters. And it's actually not a completely new operator because we had this already for Lambda functions. If you have like a bunch of parameters in your Lambda function and you want to just yeah, make sure you don't use a specific parameter of that. You could simply replace it with an underscore. And we now have something similar for generics. So if you specify a class or a function that takes multiple generic parameters and a specific type, a specific generic uh, type actually reappears in that, in those generic types, then you can kind of omit these tabs now using an underscore. So I will have an example here. I think that makes it a little bit clearer. It's basically just a way that you don't need to specify a certain type if that already appeared in that list of parameters or if the compiler is actually um, able to find out that type because you already specified it. So overall, some pretty cool new changes here. Um, of course, not as many new changes as there was the last time when there was just a Google I.O., which is like the, the best thing that can happen for me to make such a video. Um, but I will still do these once a month, so you're actually up to date. I highly recommend if you haven't watched the previous ones yet, then you should really click here to actually do that because it's quite important to stay up to date as an Android developer. And I know how that feels like to always need to search for things. It's a lot easier to just watch a single video and be up to date. Have an amazing day. See you back in the next video. Bye bye.